The result of the work of the Institute is that today the crew member is totally protected in the cockpit, cocooned against high G-forces, altitude and modern chemical and biological weapons. But what happens if, for whatever reason, he has to leave the aircraft suddenly, in mid-flight? So a lot of work went into uh, developing means of escape and you know M Martin Baker was preeminent and Peter Howard who was the commandant of the Institute of Aviation Medicine did the first rocket seat ejection trials, live trials, because there's no one else to do it. One of the other problems of course with aircraft is that if anything goes wrong you need to get the aircrew out in a hurry and the Martin Baker Avi Aircraft Company at Higher Denham for a long time uh, had been concerned with this problem of getting people safely out of an aircraft at altitude or low altitude, it didn't matter. We came into this because in order to get people out you had to apply forces to their bottoms. You put a, effectively a firework under the, end, under the seat and at the appropriate moment fired the firework and the guy was shot up into the air on his seat. In the early days, once he got out, he then had to maneuver himself and undo his own straps and inflate his own parachute. But progressively, it became more and more automated until it reached quite sophisticated lengths. Now, the problem was that as aircraft got faster and their capabilities grew, the forces that you had to apply to make sure that the ejection seat cleared the tail became greater and greater. And there is a limit to the strength of the human body tends to crumple if you apply a force to its bottom too hard. So we were responsible really for defining and advising the Martin Baker Company on the maximum forces that could be applied, which turn out to be about 25 G. The last aircraft you could just hop over the side and say goodbye Biggles sort of thing was um, the Meteor and any later aircraft you needed an ejection seat and they at that time, the feature of an ejection seat is it had to get you out of the aircraft before the tail came along and chopped you. So the faster the aircraft, the more powerful the ejection seat. And so there was developed um, various features to get the chap out safely. He had puppet-like strings to his arms and legs and to his, the back of his helmet. And so I'm pulling the ejection seat handle like this, and it, it, you were then going to leave within a fraction of a second. It would draw your legs and arms in like this, your head would be back, and a, the cover of this would snap down automatically, recognizing the dropping pressure, so you had pressure breathing, and importantly, it also protected you from being damaged by the fierce 600 mile an hour wind as you came out. Under high-speed conditions, it is impossible for aircrew to get out of their aircraft, so provision is made for ejecting them in their seats. In this test made during flight, a dummy man was used. Sometimes it's not possible to remove the cockpit canopy, and escapes have been made through the perspex hood. And that slow-motion shot of a ground test using a dummy man shows what happens. Furthermore, if he has to eject, he gets a, a kick up the backside of about sort of 17 to 18 G to get him, get him clear of the aeroplane. And if he's not properly restrained in the seat as he goes out, he can break his neck or you know, he can be in a position that's going to hurt him and permanently damage him. And all these considerations have to be made. Not all ejections from aircraft occur in the air. On many occasions, aircraft either ditch or crash in the sea but the pilot and crew still have to eject. The Institute took on this task and carried out many ultimately successful experiments in order to legislate for this eventuality. Water has always been a hostile environment for ejection. Um, we had a naval uh, contingent at the lab uh, for many years and they, they were looking at the effects of uh, immersion and uh, the, the, the difficulties of ejection underwater and how that affects, as well as the equipment side, how that affected the, the crew member. And um, a, a lot of work was done in the tank, a lot of work, we did some work in the, um, in the sea and um, I, I, I know some work was done up at Hawley Lake where uh, uh, 
uh, dragging trials were done with a motorboat going around the lake and there was uh, uh, investigation to see what what the waves did and how that affected uh, water ingress to the to the equipment if he goes into the water he has to have an immersion suit on which will protect him against the wet and the cold and he has to be able to float in a self-writing life jacket also with him is a is a seat pack which has an a number of uh, aids which help him survive. All these things are routine for someone who's going into in, in, up in the aircraft every day. And they, all, all these type of issues are taken for granted. Yet the, yet the Institute and now the Centre for Human Sciences are part of that continua, continuing development and development of these sort of aids.